another method here, and I'm gonna actually name this method after the pitfall that we encounter. It's called off by one. In computer science, um, it is so easy in so many different ways to be off by one. Um, so it's, it's even kind of joked about. So it's, it's the infamous, the infamous off by one error. Um, it can happen in many ways, but it is common with for loops. So we're going to actually write an example together um, that shows this. And then I'm going to give you some tips, some general strategies, and some very specific tips as to how to avoid this. What I mean by off by one is that the loop, in this case, executing one too many or one too few times. Here is my general suggestion. This applies to a lot of things, but this, this will help you a lot. When you're writing a for loop, you should carefully ask yourself the following question. Should the initial value start at zero or at zero or one? Okay. There'll be some guidelines I have for you in a moment, but this is an important question. Like it should be a conscious decision. Similarly, should the condition be less than or less than or equal to? That too should be a conscious decision. Um, too often we're like not quite sure. And so we just guess. Um, several years ago, a student made a poster and put it up when we got to this part of the unit. And the poster said, think, don't compile, and try at random. Okay. That's not to say compiling and trying at random doesn't work. Eventually, it usually does. It's just not very efficient. So instead of just compiling and trying at random and being inefficient, just stop for a moment and think. Um, think through what, what should the start value be? What should the condition be? And then it works out better. Because this comes up so often and it's so easy to get it wrong, to be off by one, there's a convention that others will expect you to use as well. So by convention, for simple for loops, like just when we're saying that we want this for loop to run five times. So for simple for loops, we start at zero and we use the less than operator. That's the convention. And the reason for that isn't just that we need a convention. It's also because this approach is going to integrate really well when we start doing stuff with arrays and lists in upcoming units. Okay, So this is preparing us for what's coming in the future. But let's code together an example where we want to print five lines of an asterisk on each line. So we want to print five asterisks. But too often, um, we end up with an off by one error. And the off by one error often looks like this. So we'll actually make this wrong. We'll say int i equals 0. That's our initialization. We'll then say i is less than or equal to 5, not following the convention. That's our condition. And then we'll say i plus plus. This is where we update the loop variable. I'm still, for most of class today, going to continue to label each of the four parts of our looping structures. All right, now we can have our body, and we can say system.out.println, and we can print an asterisk. That's our body. In Python, we can use that like x operator to repeat a character. Uh, there's nothing like that in Java. If we want to repeat a character, we got to write a for loop. And then we'll print done like we have been. So if you compile and run this, you can verify that it is off by one. It prints six asterisks, not five. Okay. And so let's at least leave a comment here saying this should be i is less than five such that it follows our convention. So 
First pitfall for today, watch out for off by one errors. One way to avoid them, just follow the convention for simple for loops, initialize your loop variable to zero, use less than the number of times you want it to run. So we want it to run five times, set i to zero, say i is less than five, done. Not too bad. 